Hello and welcome back to A City Planner Plays City Builders. My name is Philip, and today I want to talk with you a little bit about mass transit. I'm going to talk about theory and how I go about designing a transit system and uh, give you some uh, some basic tips on, on how to actually improve your transit line and how to actually use the tools in the game. So to start out with, we are back in the tutorial city that we used for the uh, beginning uh, City Skylines um, a tutorial that I put together. Uh, I've changed a little bit here. I have greatly expanded the city and I did this for um, illustrative purposes and I put up a transit system that I think um, will, will help out quite a bit. So this city was completely gridlocked. Um, I'm not using mods uh, except for a couple assets that made its way through um, and I'm not using many roundabouts so uh, that can lead to some traffic issues and right now the traffic's actually coming from the transit system so I've 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 uh, built a bus system a train system a tram system uh, a ferry system and a subway system and I want to go through each of those to explain the theory behind what I was thinking when I put these together so let's start out with the bus system so I've come up with a number of different routes. I'll organize them by name and I'll kind of walk you through each of them. So first, there's a couple things to think about with a local bus route, um, or the bus route rather. There are different ways you can structure your system. You can have a system that pulses at transfer points. And what that means is you have different loops that you know start at one transfer point and end at another, uh, or uh, and then loop back to the other one uh, you could have a system that uh, is radial from a bus bus uh, bus depot which is kind of what I've done here um, or you could have a system if you have a very gridded city where buses meet at intersections of major roads and then the, the buses just travel up and down a road um, and just keep repeating a pattern down that road and you can name the bus after that particular road um, neither system is more right or more wrong it's just dependent upon what you are doing um, with your roadway layout I, I think that the most important thing to remember with all bus systems is that you're gonna want to provide transfer opportunities and you're gonna want to place stop distances uh, according to the density in the area what I mean by that is if you have a very very dense area you're going to want stops frequently and if you have an area that is sparsely populated uh, you're going to want fewer stops um, but there are there's some nuance to that as well so i'm going to start out with my local bus routes so in the downtown area i have this downtown loop and this is basically providing a ton of access to the core downtown area uh, stops are frequent and it's just doing a loop, a short loop back and forth um, around the downtown area clockwise to the bus depot. I've supplemented that with what I'm calling uh, the 1L, which is the downtown loop clockwise limited stop. And I have about half as many stops on there. Um, so you'll see this in many cities and because, because this is a mod, mod free, uh, normally I would use an articulated bus for this type of uh, stop, but I can't this time. Next, I have a route going in the opposite direction, which is the counterclockwise. And I also have a limited stop version of that route. I also have a local bus route dedicated to my tourism area. Again, many stops on this. I, I do not have a limited stop variety of this because it doesn't really wouldn't be beneficial. Access is the, the main thing here. Think about it. If you were going to a hotel, you don't want to take your luggage three blocks. <laughs> and then I have uh, a downtown route serving the low density areas in, in, in the downtown or the lower density areas or the areas that at one point were lower density still for the most part is lower density. Um, I space the stops a little further apart on this route. The theory behind that is 
people are going to be willing to walk a little further and to be able to capture the ridership that would make this a, a, an effective route, which it is a, a very productive route, you want to space the stops a little bit further, make the route a little bit longer. Something similar I'm doing over here. This is just, again, going back to that main bus depot and uh, looping around this higher density, um, uh, high tech and uh, you know, green area. And then to supplement all of those and provide access to employment, I have created what I'm calling the Industrial Express. So an express route is another type of route where you could have a couple stops in the beginning if you want or none, and you just hightail it over to wherever you're trying to get. So for this, I don't have any stops in the beginning. I'm only providing access to employment destinations. So the assumption is you're either walking to the bus depot or transferring from one of the, the, the routes that's picking people up. And again, this is a pretty productive route. I have an inverted express route uh, in this particular location. This is actually my most productive route. I've created a suburban area on uh, this kind of peninsula that's jetting out. And I'm just looping around Nope, that, that seems like it's kind of a weird stop. Uh, might have to fix that. I'm looping around this area, starting at the bus terminal that I placed in the suburban area, coming around, picking people up, and dropping off directly at the other bus terminal. And then I also have a commuter route coming from this bus terminal straight to the other bus terminal and just kind of ping-ponging back and forth. Not as productive, but still an important uh, way to, to, to supplement the system. So to complement this, I have a number of other things going on too. So I have tram. This is bi-directional. It's just kind of going around the downtown area. This was, I created this in the last tutorial. I did get this out of the roundabout. Uh, it was really clogging things up here. So I brought it back around, have it going over and looping back around, added some density around this area, um, kind of thinking transit oriented development in that particular, around this particular tram. You could also use tram as your rail if you didn't care about outside connections. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, tram is basically light rail. So there's no, you don't necessarily have to have you know, the, these rail stations that I'm using if, if you don't want them. Next, I have created a... Well, actually, I'll come back to the subway. Next, I've created a rail corridor. And... So basically, what I, the reason why I've done this... So I wanted to provide... Me this turned on so I wanted to provide inner city service but only at certain uh, in certain areas and I wanted to carry a ton of passengers back and forth between these islands and give them the opportunity to transfer if they want and this is probably why those commuter buses aren't working quite as well because you can take the train there and it's quite a bit faster and you can see that these these routes this one allows inner city trains. If someone wanted to come from another outside area and go to their home in the suburbs, they could do that. And then the big, big behemoth of the, of the mall, or it was at one point, it was around 500. Um, like it kind of bounces. Uh, another one allowing inner city um, service right here. Um, and this is near my bus terminal. And then another one in the industrial area, allowing people to get to work. Um, so you wouldn't want to have too many of these train stations. You just want to provide ample spacing uh, to, 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 to make sure that these are as fast and efficient as they can be. You want any turns to be as gradual as possible so you can maintain uh, excellent speeds. Um, 
And that's, that's kind of how you make these successful. Let me turn off some of this other stuff. Um, and then I also have a subway line. Now, I, I wanted to do something a little different. So this, this peninsula over here, I don't have the tile to be able to, to connect the two of these, and I didn't want a big bridge. So I needed to find ways to connect this island, or this peninsula, to the other peninsula and the island and the industrial area. So obviously, buses on ferries doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> um, so you could rely 100% on ferries, and I was for a while, but I thought that it would be great to have a subway station. So in this area, I have a little bit of a commercial a commercial district, and I have a subway station here. Again, the rules for 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 subways are very similar to that of commuter rail. Again, I am really concentrating all of these modes of transit close to one another to make sure that there are ample opportunities to transfer. You can see that people are taking advantage of this. Um, high utilization, this is a low density area and you still have pretty incredible transit utilization. And then once I get into the urban core, uh, stop placement gets a lot closer. And uh, the main reason for that is you have a higher density of destinations. So I'm trying to, to hit all of the areas that there are. there's a great deal of density and provide transfer opportunities. Now, some of these are more successful than others. And, and part of the reason for that is I have a lot of transit in the downtown area. Normally, I don't think I would place this many, but for illustrative purposes, I wanted to do so. Um, so some 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 tips about transit that I think would be beneficial to everyone. So when you're when you're building transit, first and foremost, use all the tools at your disposal, whether that is you know bus lanes, um, you know uh, turning off junctions that don't make sense. Uh, you'll see that in some cases I'm just disabling stop signs and. Um, and, and stoplights to, to make traffic flow a little more efficiently. Um, this is, I think, more of a bug of the game. If I were to add in a stop sign here, it would back everything up. Uh, they would let people walk across the street before anything else. But you can work on that as well. Way to do that is to try to get pedestrians off from the roads in, in key locations. And the reason for that is the buses will be very timid about uh, proceeding if someone's crossing the road. Uh, you could add stoplights, but then things are going to back up. Or you could separate in targeted locations. And here, uh, I want people that are at the high school and at the train station and at the subway to be able to get to the bus depot relatively simply in, in a, an off-the-road system. So I have a whole network of paths back here that is being well utilized uh, getting people to all these different areas um, and, and giving them the opportunity to transfer between these different modes. You can see that we've got tram right here. All of the modes are coming together. Um, another thing that I've done in this in this city is I've, I've actually made transit fare free in an effort to reduce pollution and encourage people to, 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 to hop on transit. If I wanted to really take this to the next level, uh, I would throw bike lanes in in some of these areas. Uh, this would be a good candidate, get people off out of their cars, going to, uh, to areas around here and, and coming up with a network that's connected that kind of parallels and mirrors and, and connects up to some of my high frequency transit stops um, and, and, and get them linked up by bikes. And then have, look at my policies and make sure that you know my policies are encouraging biking and transit utilization. Um, some other things, if, if you're a complete beginner and, and uh, aren't really familiar with, with how, the, how to, to, to fix transit, um, so I mentioned that I had that issue with that route over here. Um, so this, the transit and public transit overview allows you to do quite a bit of stuff. You can, if you wanted to change the bus, the look of the bus, you can do that. If you want to change the color of a line, you can do that. 
if you want to uh, rename a line, you can go in here and say, you know, this is actually route 99 and 99L. You, if you have the day and night cycle on, you can change it so that they're only operating during uh, the periods of the day that you'd like them to operate. Uh, you can modify the number of buses you have by adjusting the budget for each individual line. And you, you can go here to actually see where your routes are backing up. And uh, if I were, if I had mods on, I would use this screen to figure out if an articulated bus was merited. You know, I see that there, there's kind of a glut of people at this stop, but it's being relieved by the new buses, but the stop directly after it is not. So that would be something that I would, I would be uh, wondering a couple things. Is this the right method of transit here? Uh, or do I need more buses? Or if I had mods on, do I need an articulated bus? A um, couple other things. If you wanted to modify a route in your inside of this transit screen, so you click on the bus route and you can actually just drag a stop to move it and fix that route that I had a problem with. Um, you know, flooding issues here. This has been a constant problem over here, something that would need to be remedied and it's causing lots of backups. Uh, I also have a lot of buses on this particular line, I believe. Yeah, I'm at 200%, 203% capacity because of how productive it is. Um, but yeah, m when you're designing a route for any, any sort of transit, think about what the route is to do. Is it to provide access to people to get to a transfer center? and uh, have another route that's going to provide access to destinations? Uh, is it kind of a do-it-all route? Um, is it a commuter route? Is it a local route? Is it a limited stop route? There are a variety of different kinds, and I, I guess I just really want you guys to think about that when you're designing these routes because that's how you can, can build a transit system that has lots of riders and high utilization and helps you with your traffic. Um, I mentioned this is way more routes than I would normally have. Um, I would probably eliminate uh, this commuter route right here. It's just not very productive. I would probably look at, in particular, this route that's going around uh, this suburban area, uh, the Forest Park commuter, and I would probably ask myself if this is the most efficient way of serving this area if you look at the line details I've had problems with a number of these so that means a couple things it could either mean that this is the wrong type of transit for this area or it could mean that uh, you know we need to to look at dividing this route into a smaller route you know this is there's a lot of stops on this route it's 10 kilometers which is longer than most of my other routes it's carrying a lot of people um, I do know that at the other end of this bridge, I have access to the tram. I could have a tram route kind of ping-ponging back and forth. Um, I would need to, to come up with some turnaround in this area, but that would be an option. Having it kind of ping-pong back and forth up and down this road um, to, to carry some of this, since these are where the stops are really kind of getting, getting jumbled up. But... Anyway, I think I'm going to end it here. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Um, I do have the ferry as well. Uh, I can cover that if you want. Let me know in the comments. Um, and let me know if you want me to go into any more depth on this and, and what other topics you like seeing. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.